Mobility scares some people. And it clearly rewards others. Years ago, we used to rip NBA players when they choose to control their future and not let an owner or a crappy GM or a bad coach control their future. How dare you not be loyal? And yet today, we look at athletes who don't move like Bradley Beal and go, what are you doing? Go to a better team. Mobility scares many of you. But those willing to push themselves are rewarded. And today, Brian Kelly has a better football job, LSU, because you get better players there. Coaches leave for different reasons. Brian Kelly is 60. He has rebuilt three programs brilliantly. Notre Dame is in the best shape since Lou Holtz was there. But every time he plays Alabama or Georgia or Clemson, he's got by far the second best roster. Because there's that academic thing and that cold weather thing and that rural thing. It's hard to coach at Notre Dame. Brian Kelly told me a decade ago in Texas, he said, you can't coach here 20 years. At LSU, it is football 24-7. Brian Kelly recently said, if you're just into football, you can't coach at Notre Dame. He wants to finally go up against Kirby Smart or Dabo Sweeney. He wants to go up against Nick Saban and have as many great NFL players because he went to a national final game and got blown out. And then he went to two other playoff games and got blown out in both. And if he played Georgia in this year's playoff, he'd get smoked in that one too. Because Brian Kelly, in a rebuilding year, he told all of us, this is, this is not a playoff team. And yet here they are. He has done everything every school has needed and paid him to do and for once in his career at 60 years old, I want to have as good of players as Saban when I play him. But Notre Dame is hard to coach. Not that LSU is easy. It's in the best college football conference. But Louisiana per capita has more NFL players than any state in the union. I kid you not. You can basically only have to leave the state for an occasional offensive lineman. You can get all your players there. Brian Kelly has to get on a plane for every single recruit at Notre Dame. Do they qualify academically? Do they want to play in cold weather? They don't give a rip about Era Parsegan and Lou Holtz and the Golden Dome and 90% of kids these days. They don't care. I'm 50. I don't care. So it's a good job, and coaches leave for different reasons. Kelly has been banging his head against the wall for years they used to get mad at him because of the way he looked on the sidelines. Remember that when he first got there? You can't show that kind of emotion. That is, this is too precious, too dignified, too rarefied of air for you. I don't think that's going to be a problem, y'all, at, at Baton Rouge. He can yell and scream all he wants, like Nick Saban does down the road at Tuscaloosa. You can yell and scream at the, you know, at your players if you get mad. Or, by the way, as Nick Saban does, yell and scream at your coaches. That too, Nick really yells at his coaches. It's an easier job. The weather, the academic route's a little easier. There's players everywhere. You don't have to fly for every recruit. And by the way, Ed Orgeron, who's leaving LSU, is one of the nation's best recruiters. Brian Kelly sees that pot of gold he's inheriting. They also have a good young quarterback. So for the first time in Brian Kelly's life, when he steps on that campus today, because he's flying there right now, he will have every bit as good a roster as Georgia, Bama, Clemson, and Ohio State. And this guy's been crushing it for 30 years. He owes himself to be challenged. Go ahead, complain about the players. What about the players? What about him? I know Kyle Hamilton, the All-American's going to be a top five pick in the draft. I listened to him this morning. He's all good with it. He gets it. Shock, but gets it. Players now can leave early for the NFL. They can skip bowl games. They can go into the transfer portal. They get paid. Players? Playoffs? Players? Players are fine. Notre Dame players this morning. They're handling it better than the lunatic fans at Notre Dame. Folks, coaches leave for different reasons. Brian Kelly's 60. He doesn't want to be in a golf course in two years. If you do, that's fine. But coaches now... Players are playing into their 40s. Why can't he coach into his 70s? Belichick's almost 70. He's got eight years left. Pete Carroll's 70, second highest paid guy in the league. 
Nick Saban's almost 70. He looks like he could coach another 10 years to me. Brian Kelly doesn't want to sit in a golf course. He wants to challenge himself. He wants to be able to go toe-to-toe with the big dogs and have just as good, just as good a staff. His coaching salaries will match everybody. He's going to make his defensive coordinator, Marcus Freeman, if he goes, the highest-paid coordinator in America. He just wants to be on an even playing field. And coaches do it for different reasons. Lincoln Riley went to USC. Well, Lincoln Riley's history, his DNA, he grew up in a small little town. And then he goes to Norman, Oklahoma. And the program doesn't really need him. They've always been good at Oklahoma. And he says, I got a beautiful family. Football's entertainment. I want to go try to rebuild the entertainment capital of the world's football program, USC. I'm not going to tell coaches and families what's right for them. I've left four times across the country. I've made the right move three out of the four times. But I know what was good for me more than my critics and Brian Kelly and Lincoln Riley know. The players will be fine. It's the best year for candidates I've ever seen. Oklahoma's going to get a great coach. Notre Dame's going to get a great coach. Washington just got one. Uh, uh, Luke Fickle is available. He's still out there. What a great opportunity. Luke Fickle, he's like the fourth best coaching candidate. In any other year, he'd be number one. This year, he's about four. He'd go to Notre Dame and win. Maybe they keep Marcus Freeman. It looks like he'd do well. The players love him. Everybody's going to be okay. Many of you are terrified by mobility. Push yourself. You can also be rewarded by it. You know, if I could tell you, you're going to make millions owning a waste management company or be an actor and maybe be in the Avengers, what would your kids think is cooler? If you could make millions being Joe Buck and broadcasting the World Series and Super Bowls, Or be a really powerful tax litigator. What would your kids think is cooler? It kind of matters, right? There's a lot of ways to be successful. But people move to Los Angeles for dreams. Because they can succeed elsewhere. But L.A. is fun. It snowed during Ohio State and Michigan. We don't get that here. Or humidity. It's 80 degrees in L.A. today. And as Lincoln Riley stood atop the USC Coliseum yesterday, the entertainment capital of the world was behind him. USC is struggling now, but the five or six biggest brands in college football are Notre Dame, Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma, Alabama, and yes, USC. I know George is good now, but they got one natty. That's it. I know Clemson's good now, but... They were invisible for 25 years. USC is a mega brand in the entertainment capital of the world. Hall of Fame, they've got the most ever. NFL players drafted, number one ever until last year. Now they're second. Heisman's six. And with Lincoln Riley, put another five on the board in the next decade. Right in downtown Los Angeles. From San Diego to Los Angeles to Santa Barbara, east of Palm Springs, you never have to get on a plane and you'll have a top five recruiting class. When Pete Carroll was here, he had one rule for leaving the state. He would only recruit players out of the state if they were, in his mind, first round picks. Brian Cushing, like a Mike Williams, remember the wide receiver. Otherwise, there was no reason to leave. You don't even need Texas. And Texas has great players. You don't even need Georgia. And Georgia's got great players. Occasionally sprinkle in a Florida kid, and it's all good. This is a great job that's down. Alabama was down. Oklahoma's been down. Ohio State briefly's been down. Michigan's been down. But, boy, you don't rebuild these big brands. You just reboot them. And Oklahoma's going to be just fine. Because Oklahoma football is always just fine. By the way, side note, not a big deal, but I've been a USC fan for years. You live in Los Angeles. It's kind of cool, right? Like college programs are usually in the sticks, right downtown LA. USC's got the easiest schedule I've ever seen next year. They don't play Oregon or Washington. Notre Dame's at home. 
They play Rice and then Fresno State, which now just lost their entire staff. If you've ever wanted to be eased in to a job and the Pac-10 has been circling the drain for four to five years, it's not going to take long. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.